This video will cover the basics of Wi-Fi client card roaming from access point to access point. We will also cover how proper AP installation affects proper client roaming. Now note, to ensure optimal AP placement, Proxim recommends to have a site survey done professionally to ensure optimal performance. Let's cover on how does the wireless process work. So the decision to roam is made by the wireless client card. The roaming process is a set of proprietary rules determined by the wireless card manufacturer and is usually determined by the signal strength, noise level, and the bit error rate that it receives. So as the wireless client card communicates on the network, it continues to look for other access points or an AP and will connect to APs that are within its program criteria. So as the wireless client card moves away from its current AP, the signal will drop below a predetermined threshold. The wireless client card will attempt to connect to another AP in Rome from its current AP to the new AP. So this is generally how it works. This is the simple way how it works and I'm going to show a diagram which is going to make life a little bit easier. So we're going to go over some guidelines for roaming. Um, an access point can only communicate with client devices that supports wireless standard i.e. 802.11b, g, 802.11n, and 802.11a. Now, n could be either a, which is 5 gig, or g, which is 2.4, uh, just for the highest speeds. But you cannot have a 802.11b communicate with a 802.11g, or a 802.11a, 5 gig, communicate with a 2.4 gig. It's just not designed that way. Um, all access points must have the same network name to support client roaming. All access points and clients must have match and security settings to communicate. Very, very important. All access points in the same vicinity should use a unique independent channel. I'll go ahead and uh, cover that here in a little bit. All access points that use the same channel should be installed as far away from other access points as possible to reduce the potential of interference. An access point cell size should laugh by about 15 to 25 percent to ensure that there are no gaps in coverage and to ensure that the roaming clients will always have a connection available. And I'm going to go ahead and cover that, show you some pictures, diagrams so you uh, get the idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and put it all together. What we're looking at here is just a building schematic, and we have six access points. And you can see there that they are pretty much within that 15 to 25 percent overlap as we talked about. And we also follow in the 2.4 standard of the channels we want to use, 1, 6, and 11. You can see so we don't have any interference. So the basics of it would be this. Let's just say that I, I am a client and I am over here, and I want to roam this way. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to start walking, walking, and then all of a sudden these two access points are talking to each other. He knows that it's there. Now I am handed off to this access point, and so off and I'm walking this way. I'm handed over to this access point, and if I want to go down, I'm handed over to this access point. Now, uh, generally speaking, if there's no interference, if there's no obstacle in the way, this is going to be fairly simple roaming going across. Uh, if you're going to have any type of interference or any uh, obstacles that could bounce the signal, uh, the roaming process itself could not be too smooth or as smooth as it should be. But what we're looking at here is how it should look like. Um, once again, we do recommend that a certified installer uh, does this for you, creates a perfect environment where you could roam fairly seamlessly between access point to access point. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a bad installation. And uh, as you can kind of see here, all these access points, they're really close to each other, at least the cell sizes are. Remember, it's got to be about 15 to 25% overlap. Here, we're maybe 75, 80% overlap. 
So what does this mean overall? So let's just say that I am a client card and I am located right over here, okay? And my signal strength is extremely, extremely low. And you're trying to figure out why is it low? Why is my performance so low? And you are literally standing right on top of this access point. So you figure you would have to connect to him. Now remember, depending on the signal to noise ratio and the signal strength and the bit error rate, all the things that we covered that the client card is going to use to use the roaming process, it is still connected to this access point to number one because it's within its boundaries. It's within its guidelines. So because the signal strength is so low, but it's still within its boundaries, it's going to connect to this guy. And you will not roam to this guy until maybe you go maybe somewhere over here. So if you can kind of see, this is not how you want to do it. Now, in this particular case, you may want to try to power these access point down so you could create that perfect cell they're kind of looking for. But it is recommended that you get professionals install your access points. Uh, they'll make sure that the cell coverage is right. Make sure that your channels are correct. Uh, and you're going to get the best performance out of your access points and out of your client cards doing it that way. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.